I'll show you how to make a cake that frosts itself. It's magic. Up next on the Trailer Park Cooking Show. She's bringing the trailer park lifestyle to the world. Come inside, don't be shy, cause Jolene can't wait to meet ya. She's the queen of the park, she's got gossip news and lots of food to feed ya. Jolene Sugar Baker, Jolene Sugar Baker is one budget minded girl. Lots of cheap fashion is the passion at the park, the passion at the park, the passion at the park. Dropping in on neighbors is all part of Jolene's world. Jolene Sugar Baker, she's the trailer park queen. Hi Trailer Park fans, it's Jolene Sugarbaker, the Trailer Park Queen, and welcome to the Trailer Park Test Kitchen, and welcome to another edition of Cooking with Jolene, the Trailer Park Cooking Show, where I teach you how to live on a budget and do it the Trailer Park way. Well, spring is right around the corner, and there'll be potlucks to go to, and all sorts of things that you need to take a bake good, and Today, I looked around the cabinets and I don't have any cans of frosting. The only one that I have is in the refrigerator. I know there are some of you out there that do the same thing. You've got a can of frosting in the refrigerator where you take spoonfuls every now and then of it. I know that's bad for you, but um, today I needed a frosting for a cake and I just didn't have it. Well, today's cake recipe makes its own frosting and it's just like magic. It's my self-frosting magic chocolate cake. Up next on the Trailer Park Cooking Show. I'll be right back. Welcome back. Making my magic self-frosting cake is really simple. And today I'm using my stand mixer. And I know I get comments about this all the time that, Jolene, that's not very Trailer Park. That's very expensive. Well, if you get up early, you can go to the thrift stores and it's amazing what you can find for $30. But you can mix this by hand and you'll be just fine. I've got a half a cup of regular butter right on in there. And this is three-fourth cup of regular sugar. And we're just going to cream that together just a little bit. I'll check back with you in just a moment. Now that you got that creamed together, you're going to add two eggs. So just go ahead and put those right on in there and I wish I had chicken still because you know I see everybody on Facebook and everything fighting for yard chickens. I'm with you all. I think everybody should be able to own chickens. Maybe not people in apartment complexes or something like that but people that have a little bit of land and can take care of them but I love chickens and we've got two eggs in here and let me get them going. Now I'm going to add about a teaspoon of vanilla extract right on in there. I don't measure, just a dash will work. And this is two blocks, it's two ounces actually, of unsweetened chocolate. You can find that in a baking bar in the cooking section. And that goes right on in there and give this a mix around. Okay, to that mixture you're going to add two and a half teaspoons of baking powder right on in there. You could probably sift this all out, but I don't have the time for that. And I have a half teaspoon of salt. That goes right on in there. Now, this is actually one and one-fourth cup of all-purpose flour. And this is two-third cup of milk. We're going to add this slowly at a time to build up a batter and keep this mixing while you do that. And I'll check back with you in just a moment. There you go. Now you have your batter for your cake. And I've got a nine inch baking pan here and I'm using a silicon one today. And I'm gonna spread out the batter 
But what I did is I put two tablespoons of butter in the bottom of this and I melted it. And what I'm gonna do is just put it right over that melted butter, right there, right there in the pan. Look at that, that's a pretty batter too. It's nice and fluffy. And I'm gonna spread it out right there in the pan. Now, today I'm using pecans and um, you could use probably any nut that you like, but um, that's what I'm using. And I couldn't afford the big ones today because um, I just used the chips here. And we're gonna sprinkle those right there on the top of our pan, just like that. Now, today we're using chocolate syrup, and it's the kind you put in chocolate milk. And what we're gonna do is I've got a half cup of water here, and we need three-fourth cup of that chocolate syrup. So let's just go ahead. Anything in a squeeze bottle is okay by me. And we've got that there. And now we're gonna take the half cup of water and add that to the chocolate. And we're gonna mix that around just like that. Now what we're gonna do is spoon this over the cake and um, all over it. And it, I know it looks watery, it'll be okay. This is what makes the magic frosting happen. And I'm just gonna pour this now that it's mixed right over here on the cake, pouring it and kind of spooning it at the same time. And um, oh wow, it looks really great. It looks like fudge topping all over the top of it. And um, you gotta be patient with it. Don't mess it up too much. And you can kind of pour it a little bit. Let's go ahead and pour it just a little bit to get it going. And pouring that right there on top. Very carefully, don't disturb it. Cause that's gonna make the magic happen. I've set the oven at 350 degrees. And this is gonna bake about 35 to 40 minutes. You're gonna have to keep your eye on it. And I'm gonna carefully put this in the oven and set your timer. my self-frosting magic chocolate cake. And you're going, Jolene, I don't see any frosting. Well, this is what you need to do. This is a just a tray that I've lined with foil, and you could use a pretty plate if you had one. And what you do is carefully, you're gonna have to kind of put your hand on it and flip it over. There we go. And then we're gonna just wiggle it out of the pan, just like that. Make sure that it all comes off perfectly in the pan. And there we go. And look at that. Look at that fudgy topping on the top there. All we need to do is just spread it out just a little bit. And look how nice that looks. And this would be great with some ice cream. And um, it has a frosting already on it and that's gonna see it. So we're gonna let this sit for a little bit and just fix it up just a little bit, just like that. Was it that magic? How did that frosting do that? I don't know, but I'll check back with you in just a moment. And there you have it, my magic self-frosting chocolate cake. And that sure was simple, look at that. It looks professionally frosted up there. That chocolate is just, it just is shiny and the prettiest chocolate frosting that you've ever seen. It just magically transported itself to the top of the cake. I don't know how it did that. And it's a nice and fluffy cake too. Look at that. The chocolate is just a pretty milk chocolate color. And I just can't wait to try this. This would be so great with some whipped cream or some ice cream. But let me give it a taste with this icing that just magically appeared. Mmm. Wow, that is, mmm, that is so soft and moist and the crunch of the pecans and that fudgy icing is just so good. It needs some ice cream. I need some ice cream with this immediately. Mmm, this is so good and it's just a miracle with a frosting up on top. I don't know. Mmm, mmm, that is such a good cake. 
I hope you get a chance to make my magic self-frosting chocolate cake. And if you do, send me pictures at JoleneSugarBaker at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow the trailer park on Twitter. I'm Jolene's trailer there. And, of course, add me on Google+. Plus. I'm there, too. There's more cooking shows right around the corner, so hit that subscribe button and tell your friends all about the Trailer Park Test Kitchen. I love you all, and I hope you enjoy my cake, and I'll see you back real soon. Bye-bye! Slap on all your blue eyes shadow. Watch out for that big tornado. Get all filled with Bye. pride in the double wide. Visit my store at trailerparkstore.com.